So what we're going to do today is we're going to begin at 33. It'd be nice to finish it. You don't have to write everything down that you see. A lot of what you're going to see here is review, and you've seen it before. I also encourage you, all the notes are on Moodle, especially, as always, but for this one, because I did do a lot of writing, there's a lot of figures. So you can jot down what you'd like to, like maybe the images and stuff, but you don't have to start writing word for word, okay? Just take it forever. Because you write something in the last, right? Okay.
they change anything? No. But now that they're two different kind of, uh, or agreement, or two different assumptions, it would make a problem, or would cause issues. Okay? That's a very good question. Some things are just chosen that way. I, I can look it up, and I'll get back to you for sure, if I find an actual answer for it. Okay? All right. So again, delta means change. Delta means change. Delta means change. Whenever you see this in physics, in math, anything, whenever you see a delta, you're going to have a subtraction sign somewhere. Is that clear? Think about it logically. If something changes, you're looking at the difference between the original and the final. Okay, so here we say the final minus the original. Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. The final X value minus the initial X value. The symbol delta and Why is delta the actual term? And that one I don't know. I mean, I know this is this is lowercase delta, this is uppercase delta. Uppercase delta, that symbol, that triangle means change. It's some sort of, it's, it's, again, it's probably the Greek word that comes back to me. So it's, delta means change. Just like, like, for example, this symbol means therefore, right? It's one of those we talked about. Yeah. Look it up. Let me know. I'm not sure about that one. It's a good question, though. All right. Let's go on to the second thing. If we look at a quick image of this, if we have two points, x1, y1, x2, y2, these twos and ones are subscripts. Okay, what's a subscript? Some number, and there is zero slope. And here's how I think about it. Right? 
If I have a positive slope, doesn't it look like this? And then a negative slope looks like this. In between positive and negative numbers, isn't the number zero there? And that's what's in between this and this. This is a flat line. Again, positive, negative, but what's between that? A flat line, that's zero. And positive and negative integers in between them is zero. Slope is undefined with vertical lines. Why is it undefined? Anybody know that one? Why is it undefined? Okay, mathematically, you're right. I just understand mathematically. There's no change in Y. There's no change in X. Again, remember the formula, guys. Slope is delta Y over delta X. If there's no change in X, doesn't this denominator become zero? Can you have something divided by zero? No. So whenever there's a vertical line, there's no change in X. Therefore, this is undefined. Whereas the other case is for a horizontal line, there's no change in the other one. Good. And zero or anything is zero, which is why a horizontal, again, this is horizontal, and this is vertical. And that's the reason for them. That's the reason for them. Now, look at the note I put here. Some textbooks, they call vertical lines. They say it has no slope. Don't confuse that with zero slope. I hate when they say no slope. Because if I said to you, if I said, I've got no money. And I said, I've got no money. How much money do I actually have? If you give me a number. Zero. Zero, right? So doesn't no money tell you zero? Whereas the book, they say no slope. So a lot of students think when they say no slope, it means zero. No slope is what they're talking about for undefined. Okay, again, when they say no slope in the book of vertical lines, they're talking about undefined. So please don't let that confusion you, because you're going to see it in your notes, in your book. And slope is undefined, Y equals something is zero. Yes, X equals something is an undefined slope, Y equals something is zero slope. And it's zero slope because remember we called it the constant function as this? When something is constant, it's not changing. If it's not changing, there's no slope. It's like walking across the floor. It's no, hopefully there's no slope on the floor, which is not true. So I, I live in a house where there is a lot of slope on the floor. So when I like put, like for example, the other day I built a bookcase and put it up in the, I'm trying to build an office in my place. So I like made these bookshelves and stuff, and I like set it up and I'm like, nice, you know, everything like small lots of The floor itself is not flat. So I had to put some shims underneath. You got a solution? Go ahead, let's hear it. What did I just say? You just said you did that. Some shims. Okay. Hey, I like it. That's right. That's what I did though. So shims are a little like little thick little uh, piece of wood about this thick. You just like little wedges, right?
Don't take it the wrong way, don't delay your hand this way. It is now a row clear hand, okay? Again, you've got to be consistent with the order in which you take the differences. If you did it backwards to start, you would have negative 2 minus 5 and 4 minus negative 3, which is fine. You get the same answer. It's when you switch only one of them, you will get a negative of the correct answer. Negative 1. Good. Negative 7 over positive 7. Oh, well, in this case, sorry, vice versa. I did it backwards. I want to see it. But you get the same answer, so, right? Okay, in my notes, I did it the other way. So we get positive 7 over negative 7, which is negative 1 now. Please, 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 mental check. Mental check. Quickly. Quickly. Negative 3, 5 is somewhere over here. 4, negative 2 is somewhere over here. Connect them. What kind of slope banding should I have here? Yeah, it's got to be a negative slope. So, Summer, let's make believe you forgot to switch these two, right? You would have had 4 minus negative 3, which would have been a positive 7. Yeah, that's Which would have given you a positive 1. But that slope doesn't look positive, does it? Always go back and check some sanity, okay? Just for your own knowledge, the second one is 1 third. And the last one, anybody get the last one yet? No, no, no. Not zero, be careful. Hold on, Ned. 1 third. C, part C. Part B is 1 third, yes. Part B is one third. Part C. Negative 15 over zero, yes, which is not zero. Undefined. Undefined. There you go. Be careful. So again, take a look at this one. This one's are definitely one third in the middle. You can check that in your own. If you just look at the delta x, look at the x. Aren't they both twos? If there's no delta x, that means that your denominator is going to be zero. So you're going to have something undefined. It turns out to be negative 15 over zero, which is undefined. Again, another way to check this is just a graph. 2, 4 is right here. 2, negative 11 is down here. Isn't that a vertical line? And vertical line have slopes that are undefined. Yes, that's what I remember I mentioned earlier. Yeah, okay. Yeah. The no, if somebody says no slope, same as undefined. Okay? No slope in this case does not mean zero slope. Okay. All right. I'm going to spend about five minutes going through something. You do not have to write what I'm going to do now. I'll tell you now. Okay? We're going to make some sort of conclusion. But I want you to see how proofs are actually generated. Okay? This is something I'm going to show you. So, here's the theorem, first of all. The slope of the line of a standard form equation, ax plus by equals c, which is what we looked at last class. We looked at examples of three classes ago that looked like this. Say 10. Okay, we found the x-intercept and the y-intercept and did this. Whenever it's in this standard form, like so, the slope of this line is just simply negative a over b. And I'm going to prove to you how that's true. Okay, so you don't have to write, just watch. The notes are online, there's a lot of writing to do those, so that's why I'm saying it's not worth the writing. So if we first start and pick some points, x1, y1, x2, y2, so I'm going to pick two coordinates. is also in your book, you can read in your book as well. So if we start with two points, and we go ahead and plug these points, say these points are on the line somewhere, so I'm going to plug them into the equation. So I get 5x1 plus 2y1 equals 10, and 5x2 plus 2y2 plus equals 10. Oh, not 10. Restart. Sorry, guys. I gave you that example. So, ax1 plus by1 equals c, ax2 plus by2 also equals c. Bear with me, smart words do not agree at all. There we go. Alright, so looking at these two equations here. ax1 plus by1 equals c, ax2 plus by2 equals c. This is the equation I would get if I plugged in those two given points. Now, if I were to subtract the first equation from the second equation, remember systems of equations last year, you briefly touched upon this, you can add equations together for elimination method or subtract them. I'm going to subtract, I'm going to do the second equation here minus the first equation. Okay, second equation minus first equation. So doing so, I'm going to have ax2 plus by2 minus ax1 plus by1 equals 0. How do I know it's a 0 on the right side? 100? Yeah, good. C minus C is 
zero. That's when zero comes in. Next, if I wanted to do this by grouping terms that are like, okay, I want to first think about this negative here. I'm just going to keep going. No, that's what I'm just saying. Okay? So, I know, for the sake of time, sorry. Man. So we have a, sure, right there now. We have ax2 to start with, plus by2. No need to do anything there. Over here, we have a negative sign. Minus ax1 minus by1 equals 0. Okay, distributing that negative sign. Now, rearrange these terms. We have ax2 minus ax1. I'm going to flip these two here. Okay, again, I'm flipping the two middle terms. I'm going to have plus by2 minus by1 equals 0. Factoring out of a in these two. Factoring out of B, these two. Okay. Next, I know this is going to sound a little weird, guys, and we'll get to the answer though. Next, we can move either of these over. I want to have my y value in the numerator eventually, so it doesn't really matter right now. I'm going to move this term over. If I want to move this entire thing over, I need to subtract it on both sides. So I'm left with B, y2 minus y1 equals negative A x2 minus x1. And what this keeps me with is my slope, really. If I divide this side by b and divide this side by b, these cancel. I'm left with negative a over b over here. That's one part of it. And then this x2 minus x1. If I want to get rid of the x2 minus x1, I need to divide by x2 minus x1 on both sides. That's an x, by the way, in the storm board again. So dividing by that, those cancel now. So on the right hand side, I'm left with negative a over b. And on the left hand side, I'm left with y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay? Again, all that works just to show you guys the proof, but just so you know, if you're given the standard form, you could always do negative a over b to find the slope. Not really necessary to do all that. Never necessary to prove the whole thing. And once we go into point slope form, or slope minor set form, then I have to worry about that. But just so you know where proofs do come from, and not just made up. Just set x to 0. Make it easy for yourself. Oh, but whenever it's a standard form, if you want to find the intercept, set the other one equal to 0. You could put it into slope y intercept form, and then look for like mx plus b, and say it's the b value. It's fine. But if it's in standard form, there's no, no necessity to do so. Okay, just plug in zero to the All right? Now, in case you're wondering, if you're just starting with this equation right here, remember this? Oops. If you had just started with this equation from the start, and solve for y, just actually solve for y, you'll get the same answer as negative a over b. Okay? You just subtract ax. And divide by b. Well, what this really means is that we have y equals c over b minus a over b x. Well, if you remember, we're going to talk about this one tomorrow. This is your slope really here. Okay, the coefficient in front of the x term. That's a key for tomorrow. And you know that already because you've already been told this, right? Or m is the slope and b is the y intercept. And way of learning it. And again, negative over b is really where the slope comes from. Alright, with that said, let's do an example. I know that was a little bit boring, guys. Proofs are not always the most entertaining. Number two, find the slope of a given line. Find it both ways, please. Find it by using simply negative over b, and then find it by solving for one.
solving it with negative error being first, and then we'll check to see that that's true by solving for y and looking at the coefficient of x. Good. Because again, guys, notice that a is 2 and b is 3. Very simple, right? Do that. Do you solve for y for us also? Or it's both the case hit and that's what you're looking at. He writes in like an inch to go back to wherever it is. If you write over here, it's much better. that is more challenging, and on top of that, this is a perfect SAT problem. They give you three sets of tables and say, which of the three tables represents a linear function? Okay, and what we're going to do here is show that if any of them represent a linear function. So to determine if the following given points whose coordinates are listed in the table lie, uh, not lie on a line, lie on a line. There should be no end there. Lie on a line. How can I do this? Somebody give me some sort of uh, maybe beginning or starting point for this. This is a 
plus 2. Okay? Next, what is my delta add to that? Alejandro? Plus 2 and plus? Plus 4. Okay, still kind of weird. It's all right, though. Still, the ratio is good. What's the next one? Plus what? Now, remember guys, these are my delta y's, these are my delta x, and slope is the quotient, delta y over delta x. Every time when you divide those, what do you still get? You're always getting 2. So the first case you have 2 over 1, right? Then you have 4 over 2, then you have 8 over 4. But no matter what, for all of these, do not back up, do not back up, we're not coming. Relax, relax. And the value should start back up. So this goes up 2, up 1. So 2 to 1 ratio. This goes up 4, up 2. 2 to 1 ratio. Look at the ratio every time, okay? The numbers don't have to be the same. It's just that the front line, the quotient of these two numbers needs to be the same. So in all these cases, even though this one goes up 1, then this one goes up 2, then this one goes up 4, it's still overall delta y over delta x is still 2. The slope is 2. So this is a linear function. Okay, this is no. And this was yes. Okay? Now, I'm not going to give you guys the homework to do that tonight because we can finish one and two because you have a test tomorrow. Please finish up your problem sets for tomorrow. Make sure you have them ready to go. Staple them ready when you come in. Please don't walk in and ask for the staple again. This is number three problem set. I want to hear that again. Okay? And we're test. So as soon as you walk in tomorrow, first period, you come in, you give me your problem set, you'll get your test. You can start right away. Please don't be late. Please don't miss school tomorrow. I'm not going to see all those things that you don't do here.